One of us. Google do. One of us. Google do. Hey everyone, Chris with Coalition Gaming here, back with another video. So, I've done so many builds using Xeons that it was only a matter of time until I became the Xeon. <laughs> so, my main rig was a 3770K overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz and with 980Ti, blah, 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 16 gigs of RAM, that sort of stuff. But the more that I got into streaming, the more I've gotten into content creation, the more I've grown as a power user, as an enthusiast, the more I've realized the need for more cores and more power. And uh, testing the EVGA giveaway build that, that we won really got me noticing a lot more of the benefits of that. Now, I already knew what the benefits of that were, were going to be, but it's different when you can really feel it and see it firsthand and see just how much of a difference that makes. So that set me on a mission to get a six core processor. And uh, well, if you guys seen the hardware hunting episode, we'll link right up here if you guys wanna watch that, I did score an Asus P9X79 EWS for 60 bucks and finally pulled the trigger uh, on a it's Xeon E5 V2 and the E5 V2 is an Ivy Bridge 6 core part that's 12 threads and it's completely unlocked just like any just like any of the uh, i7s uh, the K SKUs from that generation that being well the brethren to this one is the i7 4930K 4930K is a pretty good processor obviously and I'm actually surprised with the temps on this thing because after playing around with the E5 1650 the V1, the Sandy Bridge version, if you want to see more on that one, again, that'll be linked right up here. Uh, playing around with that one, I noticed that uh, these two things get really hot. They're 130 watt parts, and that E5-1650, I saw pulling upwards of 180 to 200 watts. Meanwhile, the V2 Ivy Bridge, uh, with all the optimizations that that brought, and the die shrink, I, I saw on average pulling its TDP even overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz, same as I had the 1650 V1 overclocked, uh, it was averaging around 130. Now, a Prime 95 blend, after a long time, I'd see it max it out around 160, but that's still not a huge power increase for the overclock increase that I got which uh well that's great 4.5 gigahertz across all cores i know some of them can do better than that but that makes me really happy because that only puts me 100 megahertz behind my 3770k and basically puts me at a uh, similar ground in terms of raw gaming performance that the four core part gave me while having the additional power of the of the cores of all the added cores and threads so uh, i'm going to go over some benchmarks with you guys for that Anyways, here's a quick time lapse on the build and uh, I'll go a little bit more over what the, uh, what the issue was. So I just want to talk a little bit here about what I had to do. There's no build without running into issues, right? Everybody always runs into some sort of issues when doing a build, especially when you try to shove a nearly EATX motherboard into a case that doesn't really support it. I mean, I, I believe this is a um, SSC or SCEB, some more to not quite EATX, uh, according to the spec sheet on it, but uh, I figured it might have had enough room. Oh, and I sure did get close. Look at that. It does sit in there but I don't really have any room to route wires through these passageways. So fortunately there was room up here for me to route the ATX power and the graphics card power. And, but there was a little bit of room for me to get the uh, USB 3.0 front header uh, plug connected there. So after all that and figuring it all out, fortunately managed to make it work. Hell yeah. Let's get back to it.
now for the benchmarks. I don't plan on going into too many though because uh, everything tends to play pretty good on a system like this when not streaming. The focus was on multitasking and the focus was worst case scenario, what game is in need of optimization that could really make your system hurt if you try to stream it? PUBG. So let's get into it. Let me refer to my notes real quick. Here we go. The 3770K averaged 75 FPS while gaming, but what really hurt it were its 1% and 0.1% uh, lows, so the consistency. But my feel, my personal feel when streaming on that is the 3770K couldn't keep up because it's fine if you just have just a, uh, I guess, a OBS open, but once you start adding sources to it, once you start adding stream elements stuff to it, browser sources, all of these things, it starts to wear down on the processor. I saw CPU usage on that go anywhere from 9 to 12 percent. And uh, I'm offloading most of what I'm doing using OBS and DI, so let's get into the six core part. The six core part doing the same test, simulating streaming, doing the same exact stuff. We went from uh, average frame rate on 3770K of 75 to 86.2. That's an average frame rate increase of over 10 FPS, and it doesn't sound huge, but it feels way better in the game. It's just, it's a completely different story when I'm actually playing it, and I couldn't be happier. 1% low is 28.1, that is an increase of 8.1 FPS, and 0.1% low was 7.8, so it's a 1.8 FPS increase which is again, not huge, but an increase is an increase no matter how you cut it. And again, just how it felt personally, it's just a lot more satisfying. It's just much smoother experience. And uh, well, I mean, uh, six core part, right? <laughs> And now I have this basically EATX motherboard mounted in a case that doesn't quite support it. So, you know me, you know Coalition Gaming, we're all about trying to make something work that isn't supposed to work the way it is. <laughs> Adapting something to work the way you want it to. And uh, you know, ingenuity, that's what I like to do. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button. Subscribe, we always have more coming. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.